Bob's. Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a Science Fiction Review Show. Uh, we are joined in this episode, this is the second episode uh, that we're being joined by our philosopher friend, David Kyle Johnson. Kyle, welcome back to Alpha Thanks. Quadrant 6. Thanks for having me back. This is a blast last time. I can't wait for this time. <laughs> yeah, so last time we talked about the Black Mirror and the meaning of existence, just a small topic yeah. that we decided to chat about. Yeah, we knocked it. that out. No yeah. problem. Uh, and so today we're going to we're going to cover time travel, a bit of a uh, <laughs> another thing, another <laughs> another easy small one to topic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but specifically, we're going to focus. We decided that all talking about all of time travel in science fiction and fantasy would be a bit of a big. It's fight. at least two episodes. It's right? at least two episodes. So we're going to focus in on a, a a favorite genre that we haven't spoken about much on EQ six. Hmm. Uh, Doctor Who, mm -hmm. uh, the the Doctor. Yeah, and you're a, you're a Whovian. You were showing us. You're, you're a Whovian. I have. I can proudly say that I have seen every episode of Doctor Who all the way back Whoa. to 1963. Mm -hmm. wow. I've watched wow, all of them dude. at least once. Awesome, Kyle. How bad are wow. the Doctor Who episodes from the 60s? <laughs> uh, a lot of them are pretty bad. There's some really good ones. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are some that really stand up and are outstanding. They're really good, but there's a lot Send of them. Send me that's... some names. Send us some names of those old episodes yeah, that, that, are, cool. that are really okay. good. Okay. All right. right. Uh, off the top of my head, the last episode of the first Doctor is really good. It's where they first introduced the Cybermen. That's a really good episode. Yeah. But, uh, ah, okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the uh, for not that we want to get too far off on just Doctor Who itself. It's like it's campy. It's like campy in sort of a, a good way. You sort of just accept that about it. But and some of the episodes are absolute clunkers. Like my the recent episode that I thought was the worst was the Moon is a Dragon Egg episode. That was yeah, just, I would agree with that. That was yep. terrible. But then there are episodes that are just unbelievably <laughs> fantastic. Like, like the one that we're going to talk about. Eyes, some of them, but especially Tennant had a, I think Tennant had an yeah. amazing run. He had, he had good writers. And then. And speaking yeah. of the Tenet's run, Blink, the episode. Blink. Yes. Oh, man. It's a and so I think season three that Blink is in is one of the best seasons of sci-fi of anything. Wow. Ever. It's, it's wow. great. And, it's and, great. And Blink is one of the best episodes ever. It's it, just it was it's fantastic. fantastic. It is. And some of the, ironically, some of the, like my other favorite episode is the, uh, the uh, ELO episode. Uh, you, you'll know what that is if you're familiar with it, but. It's a, it's another episode where a, a one-off character is the lead, and Doctor Who's in the background. Hmm. Love yeah. and Monsters. What's it called? Love and Monsters. Love and Monsters was the name of the yeah. episode. I'm being told from, yep. from our crew. <laughs> from from the ether. Thanks, um, ether Liz. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so and of course you know the TARDIS is a time travel device. The entire series. You know, the entire, right. entire franchise is built upon the concept of time travel. Time and re relative dimension in space. So let's talk Artists. about that. Let's talk about how does time travel work in the universe of Doctor Who. Kyle, what do you think? Well, I don't think there is a consistent view in the canon right. of how time travel works. Well, no, um, I know they, they explicitly state how it works. It's all timey whiny. <laughs> People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, you, you definitely have the, like, the 11th Doctor, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly uh, <laughs> kind of explanation that you get where it's, you know, people think of it as a string, and but it's really more of a circle, but actually it's a ball that's all right. Uh, <laughs> Right, you, you you do get that, uh, but what I, well, I guess what I meant was that they don't treat it consistently, right? right. So, but they're consistent and, in their inconsistency. Though. This is true, and and they're <laughs> consistent and kind of like not caring about the consistency, right? Like you'll you'll get. Uh, an episode that clearly takes this view of time travel and this is how it works. And then you get another episode that takes a completely different view and that's how it works. And they won't really bother to try to square that circle or it's whatever. It's almost as if they have different writers <laughs> <laughs> at <laughs> different times. These types of shows are supposed to come with you know, the Bible of rules. And yeah, right. but I think that I think the timey wimey is the rule. I'm being honest about that. So, yeah. I mean, and there are episodes where the doctor will get a little bit philosophical about the time travel and one of the ways that they do tend to refer to it is that time you can't mess with the time stream except when you can right yes, it's like right. it's there are these moments in time where it can branch other than right. that you you can't really mess with it but there's there, there's a way to detect those moments yeah 
through the TARDIS. Right. Like there's just an intuition. Right. The yeah. TARDIS, which is a, a somewhat artificially intelligent being, has it out. can can zero in on those moments in time because they it always just seems to take him when and where he needs to be. But the other, I think there's a very important plot reason for that for the for the fact that. You can't change time except when you can. It gives right. too many like godlike right. powers. You, you, yeah, right. So first of all, like once like the doctor makes a mistake or something bad happens, he can't go back five minutes and redo it. Right. Like once right. he right. sees something, once it's done, it's done. You can't create a, a conflict, a paradox by you can't loop back on yourself, mm -hmm. but you can just a, appear at moments in history and have an influence on that moment. Okay. Does that make sense? Right. So right. it's except, a purely except, narrative device. Right, except when you can, right? So there's a Rose episode in the second season of the reboot where she goes to see her father and like she's supposed to do something and she doesn't do it and then he goes back again and they see themselves, like they loop back five minutes and do it, right? Like there's occasionally they break that rule, they break right? The rule. um, the rules right, are made right. to be broken. But, yeah. well, I mean, but yeah, the rules are totally made to be broken, absolutely. Now, I like my science fiction to be more hard science fiction where- This is not hard. <laughs> I'm talking. Um, <laughs> Where you can predict it, right? You know yeah. how we were talking about like the magic system in The Witcher. Yeah, it has to be consistent with itself. I, you know, Doc, Doctor Who is definitely putting the drama and the writing of these episodes in front of 100% making it consistent, and that's just a decision that they've made as the as the producers of the show, yeah. which I, you know, I can I can be okay with. As our as our friend Perry used to say, we ran a live action role playing game together. And his take was always, as per dramatic effect. Right. That's it. It works <laughs> per dramatic yeah. effect. Yeah. And yeah. clearly, time travel works in the Doctor Who universe per dramatic effect. It, right? It's whatever the narrative requires it to be. That's the only consistent rule. But if we wanted to sort of kind of derive some rules out of what happens most of the time, I think it's like what we described. It's like, the timelines have to be consistent. Don't create any paradoxes. Don't basically don't create anything that narratively doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But if you can, if there's enough of a dramatic reason to break the rules, okay, you can break the rules. Right. Like almost yeah. as if there's a referee, you know, like an editor who's deciding when you can break those rules and when you can't break yeah. those rules. Well, some people have to be the people who accept the scripts. Yeah. You know, it's not like they get the number of scripts that, you know, they, they probably have people that are submitting ideas all the time yeah. and all that. Oh, we are talking about 60 years. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's it's, true. It's, it's yeah. a lot of continuity. Uh, but let's talk about the Blink episode. So give, give yeah. us a quick summary of that episode. Yeah. Spoiler, so spoiler essentially, alert. Um, yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, so essentially what happens in Blink, and you don't follow the doctor, you follow Sally Sparrow. Love that actress too. And, she oh she's she's marvelous and um, what happens is she realizes that um, she there's something strange there's these uh, monsters she goes into a house and she sees a message to her that was written in like 1969 or something like that right and she realized that this message knew that she was going to be there at that time and uh, so it, she goes, she's peeling back the wallpaper and it's like answering her questions as she's peeling it back and then it says duck. And then something flies at her head and she has to right. stop. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So um, she goes, uh, she goes back to investigate with a friend of hers. And um, while she's there, the doorbell rings, right? Like or somebody knocks on the door or whatever. And so she goes to check it out. And it turns out that the person who is at the door is the grandson of the friend, the young friend who she brought with her to the house. And she gives her all these letters, and she tells this story about how she was she trans she was transported to the distant past and met a man and had a family, and this is my grandson, and I made him promise to come here and give you this message. And she's like, "That's ridiculous. My friend's right back there." But she goes to look for it. Of course, she's gone because the weeping angels touched her and sent her back in time. And so this is the introduction of the weeping angels as a as a villain. Charged uh, great and, villain, lovely. And Doctor, they're they're Iconic, awesome. They, yeah. They they kill you by sending you back in time and letting you live to death. That is how oh, they kill you. Yeah. Um, and so and like uh, sucking your sucking your temporal energy kind of there. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, they live off of your of, quantumness and, or something. And, but what a great right. what a great villain. Uh, they when you look at them they can't move, but when you're not looking they can move. That's you why know? you can't blink. So, yeah. so yep. to me they that can move really fast when you blink. 
It was yeah. so mm -hmm. surprising because I had never heard of a, of a villain or a monster with that quite, that ability. So it was very creative. Mm -hmm. I, I, and trying to, to devise ways to get around that. You know, somebody somebody has to keep their eyes open at all times. You know, just one at a time. Just gotta go like this. You know, just keep one eye <laughs> open. What if a camera time. is seeing them? Does no, no. Uh, well, oh, no, wait, no. There was an episode where the there camera. There was an episode about where they, they actually can crawl through the camera or something, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that was yeah. that was bad. But but one way they they resolved it. Spoiler alert: is they have they put they have two, them look at each other, have them look at each other, and they then they can't move. But that that only slows them down. That they they I think they could find a way around that eventually. But it kind of worked. Why well, did you put a mirror? It's not clear. Yeah, the 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 four that like the doctor traps those four that are after them by making them shake the TARDIS. The TARDIS disappears in their trap, looking at each other. Yes, right. Yes, and, right. And as long as as long as no one disturbs them, they would just be stuck there, right? Okay. Now, if the lights go out or something like that, then can't they you kill them though? You can't just hit them no. with a baseball bat. No, no, nope. because they don't exist when you're when yeah. you're looking at them. Right, and wow. if they touch, they can't you, move, if, but if they don't they really exist. If they touch you at all, even when they're stone, when they're in their, you know, their lock state or whatever, they'll send you back in time. They're right? quantum so, creatures. They're quantum. Okay. Yes. You know, quantum, yeah. like timey wimey quantum, <laughs> yeah. whatever. They're in a, they're in a super position until they're observed, and Ooh, then they lock nice, and nice. that's going. On, right? okay. So the ingenious the ingenious plot device in this particular episode is that. Sally discovers that there is this, so there's this Easter egg on a bunch of DVDs, but the, the, the Easter egg is just the doctor ah. from 1969 just talking and he's just having one part of a conversation, right? Uh, and people have like talked about these Easter eggs and what they mean and blah, 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 blah. They seem to be on random DVDs. Uh, no one really knows what they mean. And then we eventually discover that the thing that all these DVDs have in common is they are the DVDs that Sally Sparrow owns. Like only the DVDs that she actually has in her collection, they all have this Easter egg on them. And what we realize is that the doctor recorded this and then befriended the person who essentially would make these DVDs and had him put this Easter egg on all these DVDs so that she would find it, right? And there's this wonderful scene where ah. she's talking, she's talking to the doctor as he's on this, this Easter egg DVD, right? And as she says something, he answers her back as if he can hear her. On the pre-recorded like, DVD, yeah. he's answering So how did he know the answers? Because well, he... that's the beautiful part, right? So <laughs> she's so she's talking to him, and she's like, well, I, you know, how, how can you, how you're talking to me like I can hear what you can, like you can hear me, right? It's like, well, I can hear you. Well, how can you possibly hear me? And he's like, look to your left, right? And her friend is sitting there writing down everything that she's saying, because he has a transcript of his side of the conversation, right. but he realized that now he's hearing the other side of the conversation, so he's writing it all down. And so he, he says, how do, how do you know what I'm going to say? He says, look to your left. And he says, you know, I, everyone thinks, what, what's the big deal about that? What does that he mean by that? I think it's a political statement. Look to the left. He's like, no, you idiot. He's talking about you. He only knows what I'm going to say because you are writing it down right now, mm -hmm. right? And somehow, in an uh, unknown way, we don't know how, that information is eventually going to get to you. We well, do know how. Well, I mean, at the time. Yeah, at yeah. the time. Right? Eventually we learn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. But like we don't, she he's like she's saying we don't not we do not know yet the time how, but eventually that information is going to get to him. So he only knows her half of the conversation because it was written down. But of course, the other half of the conversation is only written down because he said. It. And you have this perfect right. causal right. loop yeah. where like right. who, who started the conversation, right? <laughs> right? Each of them only knows oh what the God. other one said. Now, now Jay, that's timey wimey, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Timey -wimey. <laughs> that's exactly. There's that's funny that you put, put it that, that way. Because my wife and I have conversations where we don't even know how they started. <laughs> we don't know, you know, like, you know, you know, you're like, how do we even get on this? Why are we even talking about this? Well, oh my a, a God. fun little tidbit is uh, in my sci-fi course for the great courses, sci-fi, science fiction, and philosophy. I use this episode to talk about time travel. And we do a little bit where we do a takeoff of this, Whoa, nice. where I talk to myself on a laptop. And at one point, like early on, I say it and it means something different. And then later on, I use it again and I have a conversation with myself and we had it all scripted out. It's very fun. Um, cool. But Come it, on, that's, that's not possible. <laughs> 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 oh. So you guys yeah. really love this Doctor Who thing, huh? It's, I mean, some episodes are epic, are just inc really, really they incredible. They are poignant, beautiful, so well written. Uh, there's gems all over it, all over it. Just He's got to wade through some campy crap here. And there is there, is there the a gym. list of like arc episodes I can watch the ones and so I don't have to waste my Probably time? Probably somewhere. Oh, there's got to be a list of the best Doctor Your friends, your maybe. maybe. Um, I also, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're inclined to watch all the new ones, not the old ones, I would recommend doing all the old ones, but if you uh, are inclined to watch the new ones, I have a watching order 
uh, that you could go with that's not in just the kind of regular order. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So essentially, I suggest starting with Blink mm -hmm. to get a general introduction to the doctor, to, to the doctor, and then you skip to the eleventh Doctor, the eleventh hour, and follow Amy Pond and that adventure, mm -hmm. and you go all the way through there until you get to the fiftieth anniversary special. And you meet the David Tennant Doctor for the first time, and you meet the War Doctor there. What a great and episode then you finish, that was! And you finish that episode, and instead of finishing off with Tennant, you follow the War Doctor back to the beginning of 2005 as he's Whoa. about to reincarnate into Eccleston, and then you watch Eccleston and Tennant up through where mm -hmm. you started. That's interesting, hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And so, then but, you can skip to the <clears throat> end of you can skip to the end of Matt Smith, and then go on from there. Mm -hmm. I think that's better than watching it. I don't know, I man. So. That's a lot of episodes not watching Tenet. I don't know. I don't know. I, so, <laughs> I, just, I jumped right into Tenet. I went right. I started with him. Steve's like, ah, don't, don't watch the first season. Go start with the second one with Tenet. And I did. And, uh, <laughs> so total newbie But question. he spoils you, though, for every other, Noob for a lot of the other doctors. Yes, that's do, why you want to watch him later, because he spoils you. Good do point. All the, I made my do own all point. all the oh, doctors, your point. as they go through time, inherit the, the memories of yes. all the other doctors right so yeah. but you know but it goes through yeah. correctly through forward in time correct mm -hmm. with, with a couple of exceptions yes. that is a, rec uh, the, a recent the, one the too well the, yeah the recent ones there's some memory issues there um the transition between black and white and color back in the 70s when they went between the second and the third doctor there's this epic the end of the second doctor is this epic long 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 ass episode uh and it ends up with him being essentially punished and part of his punishment is to be stranded on earth and to have his memory wiped if oh, my wow. if my memory serves oh, wow. correct. so you get a fresh start with the third doctor when it when it tra transitions to color mm -hmm. which by the way the first enemy that the third doctor deals with is the autons and essentially the first 2005 episode with eccleston is kind of like a remake yeah. of that first third doctor episode but there are but, also there are episodes though where the doctor meets an older version of himself that he doesn't remember meeting before you yeah. know what I mean? He doesn't remember that encounter. How could he meet a, an older version of himself? Because they're all travel? they're all in time. Like he is yeah, he is disconnected travel. from time. Oh, I, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So in, in fact, Lord. he has a relationship with his wife backwards. So yes, yes. You, his wow. first meeting with her is her last meeting with him. Meeting with him. Their relationship is completely backwards. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. and so they, but they somehow they, they, found they made it work for <laughs> crazy <laughs> kids. <laughs> they both keep a diary, and every time they get together, they compare notes. Yeah, and they're like, "Have, have we done this together yet? Have we done that together yet?" And they figure uh, out what they know and what they don't. Oh my god! Um, until it goes the reverse, and the first time she meets him is the last time that he meets her. Yeah, oh my when god. he he meets her when she dies, that's when he yep. met her. Oh, it, yep. I, it's, that's yeah. very sad. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's brilliant though. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's, that's but he, he can time travel, so he can see her again. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's where the timey wimey thing no, comes. No, no, give me like, the timey wimey again. All right, uh, there, but there's certain rules about like not going back and redoing stuff, and so like he, in the in the series, he can't go back and meet her again. Once they're done, they're done. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there are also certain time periods he can't visit, like when when Amy and Rory go back in time oh, the last right. time, he cannot go that back to that time period. Um, yep. that was rough. Yeah, it was. They had to like perm yeah. they always had to find some way to like permanently get rid of the the sidekicks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was the way. So either they die or they have their memory wiped. Or they're in some alternate universe that he can't they're get to. They're in some to. alternate universe. <laughs> right. Or they're in a they're in a time bubble they did he can't get to. Or so something. what's the function of the doctor? Why does he even he and she even exist? Um the why does anybody exist? Yeah. Well <laughs> what's the meaning of the doctor? Is the doctor a self made like person <clears throat> or is the doctor been given the position? So the doctor has a name that is never revealed that we never hear. Mm -hmm. um, and this is revealed in the, the end of the um, As Matt Smith era. Um, but he actually kind of reveals why he took on the name of the doctor. And essentially it is because he is a, a helper and a healer. Uh, I'm trying to remember, uh, there's a mantra that goes with it, but it's like never wow. harm, um, never give up, never surrender, something along that line. But yeah. it's, it's, it's always help and always do good. And that's, that's why Tishi is, is the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. but, but he's a time lord. He's, yeah. he's the last surviving member of a race of time travelers, uh, except that last surviving thing is very flexible. Yeah. Uh, again, as per dramatic. So he's effect. not human. No, well, not, and, human. not human. No, not human. Two time hearts. Are, are you guys hearts. up on the very latest episode? Did you see Sunday's episode? No. No. 
I'm, I'm a couple behind, just a couple one, behind. One episode behind, yeah. You can tell me, I don't care. <laughs> but it's been established, Sarah. this is a big controversy, it was established that the Doctor can train, can change gender, mm -hmm. and, and Time Lords can change race as well. Yes. Uh, I was sure. I was rooting for for Idris for a while there. When, it's only like when they, when one doctor is going away and he's going to respawn into another one, yeah. regenerate into another one. It's like who is it going to be? Yeah, right? you know, because it could be anybody. Yeah, you're right. As long as they're as long as they're British, he can, so apparently cannot I, become an American. That's the only right. That's only the only thing. <laughs> <American. laughs> yes. Yeah, he might have briefly been American in the non-canon. There was a, a, a <laughs> Children in Need special where uh, Mr. Bean was the doctor and Rob uh, Rob Lowe was the doctor for a little bit. Um, okay. And it was it's Whoa. not canon. All right, guys, it, look it up. It's hilarious. This show Mama has no be, rules. Yeah. There are no rules for this show at all. Her dramatic effects, <laughs> <Her> dramatic. <laughs> as narrative so, indicates. You were talking earlier about how it sometimes deals with um, uh, uh, with time travel. The third uh, season episode where they go back to Venice mm -hmm. um, yes. is really good. So Martha's the companion. And so one of the, the central problems with time travel is the grandfather paradox, Yeah. right? Uh, which I, I know you guys know, right? Um, and it's this idea of, uh, so the argument is time travel must be impossible because <laughs> if it were, you could go back in time and kill your grandfather. But of course, if you killed your grandfather before he sired your father, then you would not exist. So you couldn't go back in time. So you could, there's a logical paradox yeah. that's the problem right the universe and to exist, right 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 and yeah. it doctor who in that particular episode where they go back to venice the fires of venice i think is, is it called is they deal with that 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 paradox not very well but it's also wonderfully and beautiful so it's one of martha's first episodes and she's like so we're in the past now yeah well what, what if i do something like maybe it's not this episode but it's it's in that series ah, anyway she's like, like what if i do something like kill my own grandfather and the doctor just says are you planning on killing your own grandfather? <laughs> <laughs> she says, no. And he's, well then. And that, like, that's it. <laughs> that's well then. Right. <laughs> Problem like, solved. The, the, the paradox is solved. All you have to do is make sure you don't do that and we won't have any problems, right? Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, like, so, but this is in, in philosophy when we talk about this, uh, in, it, like solving the grandfather paradox is necessary if we're going to think that time travel is possible at all, if it's even going to be logically possible, you've got to solve that. And there are essentially two ways to do that. Right. Uh, you can do a David Lewisian, what I call a, a, it's called a perdurantism view, or it's a static view where uh, time travel can allow for causal loops, but it can't allow for change. So mm -hmm. that if you were to travel back in time and try to get, get, kill your grandfather, you would necessarily fail. You'd have to fail. Uh, because it already happened. Because you, you already did you fail. Already fail. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so, uh, I call it perdurantism because perdurantism is the view that the timeline exists as a whole, past, present, and future. Yeah. yeah. Like as, 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 as something that's static and it cannot be changed. And so if there is time travel within the, the, within the timeline, right, it's all it's already, already there. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. And so you can't undo it. Um, so there is no first time, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. There isn't like a clean first time, then you go back and you pollute that timeline. That's, right. Yeah. It's, it's already, always, it's already it's polluted. Always happened, yeah. It's toxic. Right, right. Yeah, I find, I find that satisfying. Okay. I uh, can live I, with that. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons I like Blink so much, because that is the view yeah. of time travel that it endorses. And it, you get a wonderfully, beautifully, logically consistent story. And it's just and to realize the loops and stuff when you do is just very satisfying as you're watching it. This is another reason I really like Interstellar, uh, Christopher mm -hmm. Nolan's Interstellar, is because mm -hmm. it has that kind of time travel in it. I think it's just it's wonderful and beautiful. So, um, so the other solution to the grandfather's paradox is where, that you can change the past, right? But it's an alternate history. It's an alternate universe. And you can do yeah. whatever you want there because it's not your timeline it's another timeline right yes exactly so every time you travel you, you travel forward you travel into the future of your own timeline but if you ever travel back you create an alternate timeline where you can do whatever you want and it won't affect yeah. right the original timeline so you um, can kill you actually so if you do that you can't kill your grandfather right you can kill an a, alternate grandfather an alternate grandfather that looks like your grandfather and you can't prevent your own birth you can prevent the birth of someone who would have looked like you in that timeline right? that, is, that um, is ridiculously powerful if you think about it yeah. because in essence what you're doing is you're going back in time and you're creating everybody that lived in that universe is now a duplicate of them is created. Well, it's quantum, quantum. You know, it's getting that quantum, <laughs> quantum thing of quantum. multiple infinite right. universes. I'm a hard science kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. But this is this is one of the objections to this view is that you're supposed to be making sense of time travel, right? Um, and so the branching universe person says, "Oh, I can make sense of time travel when you travel back. You create an alternate universe." And the objection is that's not time travel. Yeah. 
That's universe creation. That's dimensional if you created travel. A, yeah, exactly. If you created a machine that was capable of doing that, you would have created a right. machine that's not capable of time travel. It would be capable of creating an entire universe, which is perhaps more impressive, mm -hmm. but it's not time travel. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But or or those universes already exist right, is right. the other view. Maybe there's infinite universes shifted in time, and you're just sort of traveling horizontally back in time of other universes relative to your own, which is are, very are they, are they duplicate universes because because very contrived way of looking at it, but it does it's, make it it's, all work. Or it's duplicated. So in the I forget that I'm, I'm blanking on the names. There's two people who first proposed this method of time travel, and for them it is universe creation. According to them, it would be the creation of a new universe. Okay. And what you would do, Bob, is you create a universe that is identical okay. to the one you left, up to the point of your travel in the past. Yeah. Right. And then everything. And after that, it's different because it contains this other version of you that wasn't there in the original. Right. Yeah. But it's it's identical up to that moment. Right. So the other um, option would be that you would travel to an alternate universe is like that's like a, the many worlds, you know, many worlds type of yeah. universe. Yeah. Or maybe that's, that, that's very similar or nearly identical, but something is subtly different or, or yeah. hugely different. It's possible then if you create a new universe the process of doing that destroys your original universe. That would suck. So you could still kill your own grandfather and you still exist and there's no paradox, but the universe that you're creating is the only one that exists. Yeah. Unless, of course, you travel back in time, time again, again, in which case you're always destroying your existing universe in favor of whatever new one you're creating. I don't like going any of this. Yeah. I think it's go bad, yeah. you know, redo it. <laughs> uh, it's not a bad option, you know? I mean, I, I would worry that that doesn't necessarily <laughs> avoid the paradox because if you, if you destroy your original universe, you destroy your own birth. And if you destroy your own birth, then you wouldn't exist anymore. No, no, you well, might end up with the same. But go, go ahead. You destroy it at that point. Yeah, but it just you, sort of shifts over. You are physically universe. at that point in a different new universe. Yeah. So you've moved, like you said, horizontally from one universe to another. Right. But yeah. you sort of destroyed things in your past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, time travel is just never good. Yeah. It's you know, it's yeah, it is a double-edged sword. I think um, in as a narrative device, it is a powerful, mm -hmm. interesting narrative device but creates endless mischief. Mm -hmm. And Doctor Who lives with that mischief, yeah. right? It just embraces it. And just, again, the timey-wimey thing is perfect because it's just like, don't worry about it. It's yep. all just good storytelling and hey, don't get too focused on the, the details. Enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah, but I, and I think that that's so like I'm writing, I mentioned before, I'm writing a chapter for my, I'm working on a book on the Orville, and one of the chapters I'm writing for that is on time travel. Yeah. And that's what the end of it is. It turns out the time travel in Orville is not very carefully thought out. There's paradoxes. They didn't really bother to make it one of the logic, like they didn't yeah. do yeah. for Durantism or, or the, the branching view. But in the end, it's like, so does this mean, is it ruins it? Does it just mean that we can't enjoy it? No, absolutely not. It's perfectly fine to have a logical inconsistency in your story. The story can still be good. Yeah. Back to the Back to the Future That's is the one of worst. my favorite trilogies. Of, and it's so, it's so oh, logical. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's totally it's the broken. The worst treatment of time travel ever. I just don't want the... But I still love the movies. Yeah, you know, and I guess when you're the more educated you are about this, the more potential you have to be taken out of the movie. Mm -hmm. But one of my absolute pet peeves, I, it's worse than a pet peeve. It's like something I, d I despise about reading stories or any kind of storytelling is that I, if I'm taken out of the movie and I'm sitting there and I'm trying to reverse engineer, like, well, how is that working? Why did they do that? I hate that. Yeah. yeah. It has to be implied well enough where I don't have to really think about what, what's happening. Because you, you get taken out of the story, then now I'm in my head and I'm not watching the movie right. anymore. And that's bad. Yeah. Uh, Tolkien actually talked about this. Um, so a lot of people think that to engage with fiction, you have to do something called the suspension of disbelief. Mm -hmm. um, and to a certain extent, you, you do. But Tolkien thought that that's not what really got people involved uh, in stories. And actually, he's watching a, an episode of AQ6 where you guys were talking about uh, which um, sci-fi world you would want to live in. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the things you talked about there is how the stories that seem to be better are the ones that have this giant involved backstory that you never actually hear yeah. until the author dies and then their son gets all their works and publishes it, right? right. Like, like Tolkien. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the... Um, the Tolkien's idea was that it wasn't a suspension of disbelief. He, he called it secondary beliefs and that you, you have these secondary beliefs when you can completely engage in the world and totally believe everything's in it. And to do that, you have to have something that's logically consistent because as soon as it's not, you have exactly, you experience exactly what Jay is you saying, taken, right? out. You're taken out of it. And you're, you're just, and you, at, at that point you have an, you have an option to disengage. Yeah. It breaks the illusion. The yeah, right, absolutely. Right. And, and, you know, the, you know, and it, and it factors in so many different things. Like, I don't care if you're talking about, you know, a fantasy creature or whatever, like everything has to feel real. And it has to have a background. 
And Steve, you know, Steve, you taught me this whole idea that you always have to be one step deeper. One layer deeper than whatever is really being yeah. revealed. Right? And, and that gives the illusion of infinite depth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But people like Tolkien and, uh, you know, the Dune series, you know, it turns out that he was thousands of moves. They yeah. were thousands of moves deeper than us, which is fascinating. Right. Um, but that's why those are some of the best universes of all time. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And that's why people hated in Star Wars the whole, you know, the uh, the parsec. Um, yeah. Right. It, because, you know, people are like, what yeah. the hell? That makes no sense. And they, then they had to retcon that whole idea, which... Which was weak. It was weak, but, you know... They tried. Castle though. Run, they, yeah. They tried, yeah. Um, okay, so I think we solved the whole time yes, travel Yeah, Yes, Tommy is... Yeah. I mean, I do age. think, you know, again, it, it, what that encapsulates to me is it is mainly whatever's happened has already happened. But there are moments of instability where things can change, and yep. that just create opens up the narrative possibility. Yep. It's like, yeah, everything's already kind of happened; it's settled. You can't change it, but there are these critical moments of instability right. where you can, the universe can take a left turn, right? Like the episode "Left Turn," um, right? Yeah, where that is one of those moments, whether you turn right or turn left, changes. Yes, everything. Yes. everything. Yeah, uh, I remember that. Yeah, so I think that that's a that's a thing. Even though they might break those rules, that's the overriding rule, I think, for Doctor Who. Right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think except for uh, certain occasions, they kind of they kind of reverse it, where a lot of it is like influx, and there's certain moments that you can't change, and then if, if after that, it kind of flux but then there's like certain yeah. things that like. So this is why you know the Doctor's responsible for like you know the Great Fire of Rome and Vesuvius. Uh, and the extinction of the dinosaurs, and 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 like there's all of the like if you go back, he's responsible for almost every major event uh, in history, and there are those things that there are those moments that you can't change. But <laughs> all right, well, if you like this episode, you can go to alphaquadrant6.com. That's alphaquadrant the number six.com. We want to thank you, Kyle, again for this wonderful second episode. Hey, um, thanks for having me on. It's great. Yeah, just keep uh, you know come to us with some more cool ideas because you know you. Uh, came up with these two episodes which we appreciate very much um, and you can like us on Facebook you can like us on YouTube. YouTube you can also click the bell to find out when we come up with new episodes you can also go to patreon.com forward slash Alpha Project 6 if you want to become a patron of ours we'll talk to you guys next week thank you thank you